stay together. Well, it's actually going to ride up inside the straw. If you ever had two pieces of glass together, you'll see water go up between them if you have water around there. Okay? That's capillary action. By the way, that's the way trees get their nutrition up to the uh, limbs and all. They, they don't have a heart like we do, so they don't have something that actually pumps the fluid or the sap through them, but it works through capillary action. We're going to use that same part of physics to help us do this particular task. Now, I haven't gone into the torch safety yet, so I need to switch gears and go into some torch safety, okay? Uh, we're going to push this table out of the way. I want to grab your mic on here. Uh oh, that wasn't good. You okay, John? Yes. Okay. Before we light up any fires, we want to talk about the torches. Now, what I have is I actually have three different types of torches here, but they all do pretty much the same job. There's going to be a little bit of difference between them. But let's start off with the tanks because that is probably the most misunderstood and dangerous part of uh, dealing with the torches. Number one, let's talk about the acetylene. Both of these are acetylene tanks. Okay? Acetylene is a highly explosive gas. Now, if you'll look at the gauges, you will find out that on the gauges, I'm hoping that you can see this, Anything above 15 pounds of pressure is going to be marked red. Okay, you see the 15 here? Anything above that is unsafe. Now this tank has much more pressure than that. But that tank has something in it that helps stabilize. Let's see if I can get that over the office. Can y'all see that red on that gauge? <coughs> Do not ever operate acetylene above 15 pounds of pressure. That wasn't good. Uh, becomes very, very unstable. Can't explode. Now, how do we store that inside of a tank? If you've got in fact, this tank, and I'm going to stand to the side. That's the way you should open up the gate. Stand to the side. I currently have 240 pounds of pressure on that tank. If I were to look inside of that tank, either one, I would find out that there's something like a foam in there. Okay? The acetylene is in there along with acetone. Acetone and the, and, and the foam soak up the acetylene. It stabilizes. Otherwise, this tank would be very unstable and apt to blow up. Okay? All right, keeping that in mind, do you see if it's got liquid acetone in it, what happens if I turn this tank up on the side or upside down and use it? The suddenly the, the acetone is going to come out, right? What's that going to do to my gas inside of it? It's going to become unstable. When these tanks are recharged, refilled, this tank has a weight that is known on it. It's stamped on it. They look at that before they refill it with the acetone, I mean with the uh, acetylene to make sure that the uh, acetone has not been lost out of it. They replenish that if it has. That's the way these things stay stable. Okay? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Okay. Like I said, when you open the tank, stand to the side. Okay? Do not stand, put your head above, uh, directly above the valves. The acetylene, this small tank, this particular one has a thumb wheel. Okay? Many of these small tanks, these B tanks, do not have this thumb wheel. There is a square stem. Use the proper tool when, when doing that. Um, if you don't, you'll make burrs on it that can possibly cause a leak. Now this part of our lecture nobody likes, including me, but I want you to know what a settling smells like. 
this is very important because when you smell a smell of acetylene, it's time to stop work, find out where it's coming from, and stop it. Okay? Now, don't take a big whiff, but make sure, <laughs> make, make sure you know what it smells like. I don't know, don't stick it directly. <laughs> Nobody's smoking, I hope. <laughs> okay. Like I said, don't take a big, big whiff. Just know what it smells like. <laughs> so you're ready to pass that thing back, aren't you? <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay. We all know what it smells like, right? Okay. Inspect your gauges. Inspect your torch tips. Inspect your hoses before using them. You have an older hose and it's got cracks in it, it's not worth using. I'm telling you, acetylene is very explosive. It don't play. Uh, in your spare time, you may want to go and look on the uh, web and just look at what happens when acetylene fires do happen. They, these tanks have been missiles going as much as two miles from 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 a fire before. So I'll give you an idea. And we haven't even discussed the oxygen because you know what? Does oxygen burn? No. But nothing can burn without it. Okay? A little different. A little different precautions we have to take with the oxygen tanks. They're under very, very high pressure. Once again Head to the side. Oh, wow! Okay. I have on this tank about 2,200 pounds, and it's not completely full. <coughs> 2,200 pounds. If for some reason this end were knocked off, of this what would this tank do? Take off. It's been known to go through couple of cinder block walls. It becomes a missile and if you're in the way, it don't matter. Okay? Tank's going one way. Where's this going? The other. The other way. Because of that, when you haul these tanks, you should have the safety caps on. This protects the top. Okay? You notice that these tanks are in the rack. This one's in a rack. Okay. These in particular, but when, when you have these tanks, <coughs> you do not leave them standing up in the middle of a run. Okay. I will tell you this, with the safety cap, they have been tested and they have dropped them off of a six foot dock and they survive with the safety cap. It is a policy of a lot of the tank manufacturers that handle these tanks every day to tell their people that work for them, if it falls, let it fall. Don't try to catch it. You can do damage to your back. But it shouldn't fall if you've got it in the proper device to, to haul it and store it. It shouldn't fall. But in case you are in a situation where the tank falls, hopefully you have a safety cap on it. Let it fall. Okay? All right. Now we We've gone a little bit about the pressure on this, but let's talk a little something else about it. Up here at the top, on these gauges, it has a, in red, a little prescription there that says use no oil. No oil, grease of any kind should ever be used on your gauge set. If you're changing the valves, don't have a greasy wrench or hands. Okay, what did we say this was? Okay, what does it do? It helps sustain fire, right? Okay. If I have grease in here and I open this back, are y'all familiar with the way a diesel works? It works, it ignites by the heat of compression. I suddenly throw 2,200 pounds of pressure on this part right here something's going to come apart because that grease and that oxygen are going to combine and it's going to blow the top of this thing off. 
Okay, this is serious stuff. I know it sounds a little extreme, but it's serious stuff. I just got out of a uh, safety meeting last week, and there were some questions that come up in that safety meeting that we were asked. One in particular, I was really surprised. We just talked about the acetylene and the oxygen. There's another product that we use quite frequently in our field, and that's nitrogen. Which do you think is the most dangerous, or has shown to be the most dangerous? We have one explosive, one that uh, will accelerate a burn, and we have nitrogen, which is a, a, a inert gas, very stable. Still some pressure on it, but it's still very stable. There's been more deaths from nitrogen than the others in the last few years. How? Can't smell it. It doesn't show up. People have suffocated using nitrogen. So don't take these compressed gases lightly. Use a lot of caution when, when dealing with them. Okay, let's talk a little bit about lighting the torch. Now we talked about, you know, safety on the tanks, but let's talk about the, the, the torch itself. First of all, my acetylene oxy outfit gives me a lot of options to do and compare to the smaller acetylene air torch. Number one, by changing the cutting or the, or the head, I can actually cut steel with the oxyacetylene. I cannot do that with the oxygen, I mean with the acetylene alone. I found out in our particular field that from time to time we will need to do that, but for the most part, acetylene and uh, air or acetylene oxygen with the brazing or soldering tips is sufficient. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and crank my valves up. I'm going to bring up the pressure on each. By the way, you don't want to put your head in front of that uh, valve when you're adjusting it either. That's, that's, that's the dangerous part in front of it, directly in front of it. Okay, how many of you smoke? Take your lighters and leave them in the classroom when you're doing this. You think, well, I'm all got it in my pocket. That ain't no big deal. you got a small explosive in your pocket. Okay, if you were to catch on fire, Lord help us. We don't want that to happen by any means, but if you had a spark to come down into your shirt, you could actually wind up in a guff of, 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 of a fireball from something as small as a lighter. Okay. All right. How do we light it? We're going to make a little smoke here. We're going to bring our acetylene on. I want you to watch what happens with the field. You see the flame jump away from it? Bring it back down until it comes back to the torch pit. Now bring on our oxygen. I have what's called a carbonizing flame right there. You see I've got more gas than I do oxygen, so I don't have a complete combustion. You see, right now I see two cones in there. If I bring it on down, I should start seeing three cones. Do you all see three cones? Okay. Bring the two inner cones together for your oxygen. I have now have a neutral flame. Oops, jump back up on me. I have them. Okay, that's a neutral flame. If I add more